been, you know, very adamant about right. where they stand on this. And in fact, even to the point that Stephen Jones said that if a player protests, he won't be a Dallas Cowboy. When you hear that, what's your reaction? Yeah, I mean, it's. I don't necessarily listen to it. It has no effect to me because I, I do exactly what I'm doing and what I've said and what I stand by, whether I was wearing the star or not, whether I was playing for Jerry Jones, Stephen Jones, or any other owner. Uh, I believe in what I believe in, and that's that. Is that what? What is that in, in terms of the anthem? I mean, does that mean? That yeah, I mean, I'm. No, I never protest. I never protest during the anthem, and I don't think that's the time or the venue to do so. Uh, the game of football has always brought me such a peace, and I think it does the same for. A lot of people, a lot of people playing the game, a lot of people watching the game, a lot of people that have any impact of the game. So when you bring such a controversy uh, to the to the stadium, to the field, to the game, uh, it takes away. It takes away from that. It takes away from the joy and to the, the love that football brings a lot of people. And so. I think he deserves a round of applause, um, not because of protesting, even though that's brave of him to say, but because we know what happens when you disagree with these social justice warriors. Now, there's a an alleged story about David, or sorry, Derek Carr, quarterback for the uh, Oakland Raiders, predominantly black team, includes Marshall Falk, um, a guy who who sat on the bench and kneeled. Stood for the Mex- Mexican anthem, though. There's a story that says his offensive line let Derek Carr get sacked because he did not st- uh, kneel for the national anthem. And it's according to some radio hosts called Armstrong and Getty. And let me read for you what they said, uh, at least the article. The host stated several times that they did not know if the allegations of Deep Root, which was the name of the, the source uh, within the team, were true. They didn't know if it was true. According to them, however, the source claimed to have heard an offensive line member say of Carr, if he wants to stand alone, for the national anthem, he can stand alone on the field. Now that's pretty vicious. Imagine, and that's from Sto- that's from Snopes. So take that what you will. Uh, does that? But does the claim seem believable? I think it does. I think knowing what we know about how these sorts of people act, if you don't agree with them, then they don't care what happens to you. Imagine you work at a grocery store or something, and some guy, because you disagree with him politically, allows a box to fall on your head, a heavy box, and that's probably not as bad as what would happen if a bunch of 280 pound guys got a free shot at you probably a concussion that's better than a concussion just a grocery box but another part that i really liked that prescott said was right here and so for me i'm all about making a change making a difference um and i think this whole kneeling and all that was all about just raising awareness and the fact that we're still talking about social injustice years later i think we've got to that point i think we've proved and we know that the social injustice so i'm i'm up for taking a next step that whatever that step may be uh, for action and not just kneeling. I've always believed standing up for what I believe in uh, and that's what I'm going to continue to do. I mean, yeah, I, resp- I, mean, I respect uh, what all those guys believe in. I mean, if they believe in it's going to make a change and it's making a difference, then uh, power to them. Uh, but for me, I think it's about doing something, action. It's not about taking knees, it's not necessarily about standing. Um, it's, uh, we can find a different place uh, to, uh, to make our country better. Um, and obviously, as I said, I'm not naive and I'm very aware of the social injustice that we have going on, but I'm um, about the actions that we can do to, to fix it rather than the silent protest. Do you have anything? So he's right about that. It's been almost three years and what's been done about it. Now, a while ago, the league and some players, former players, a couple current players, I believe, got together and they decided to give them $100 million towards various causes and towards these players to to spend on what they thought were just causes. I made a video about it, and it was called NFL's Giving Million, $100 million to Who? I'll link it in the description, but it's been almost three years, and like all these protests, they haven't really offered any solutions. It's all just become, in my opinion, an F-Trump sort of deal. And you, you got to ask, either they've done nothing with the money, or the media just doesn't care, and they only want to show the the grave injustice portion of it. And this really represents both sides, I think, this whole argument with Prescott coming out and saying he recognizes the claim, but he wants to fix it. And then the other side, uh, and this is where I get into some trouble with people, is it's sort of like you have to agree with me or do what I want or else you're essentially evil. You're essentially a bad person if you don't just blindly agree with my cause and, you know, white supremacy, all that sort of stuff that goes along with it. And people like to claim it wasn't about the anthem, which is where I said, like I said, I get into trouble. They're like, oh, it's not about the anthem, about the cause. But luckily, we can look back 
and what I encourage people to do is look back at what Kaepernick, Kaepernick actually said. First quote, he says, I'm not going to stand up to show pride in a flag for a country that oppresses black people and people of color. So right there, it is about the flag, and it's about the country. Next quote, where there's significant change, and I feel that flag represents what it's supposed to represent, and this country is representing people the way that it's supposed to, I'll stand. People are dying in vain because this country isn't holding up their end of the bargain as far as giving freedom and justice, liberty to everybody. That is something that is not happening. I've seen videos, circumstances where men and women who have been in the military have come back and been treated unjustly by the country they have fought for and have been murdered by the country they have fought for on our land. So he's sort of mixing up, I don't know, treatment of veterans, which of course never gets any coverage in this issue at all. But of course at the time... Um, he was saying it's about police killings. It's easier to say it's about racial injustice than it is to talk about veterans and stuff like that. I understand you got to pick your battles, but that's where the media has focus, chosen to focus on. So was it? why do I say it was about police killings of black people? So he wore pig cop socks, socks with pigs uh, as cops on them, and along with the racial injustice thing, it was pretty well known at the time. I don't think I'm exaggerating or making anything up to say that it was about police killing uh, black people. But that was pretty easily debunked. If you look at the numbers of unarmed, unarmed black people killed by police, 2017, 20, 2016, 19, uh, 2018's been lower than the both than both of those so far. Still many, it's t still it's too many, of course. Um, I'd rather it be zero. I think we'd all rather it be zero. Um, but if you're going to bring up the race, the race issue, it can't, especially when it pertains to to shooting people, you can't just have it factless. You can't just be like, no, it's a feeling. It's a feeling we feel. Because it paints all cops with a uh, broad brush, and it sort of like puts them in this situation, which we've seen, where, especially in England, by the way, but which we've seen over here, where cops are kind of afraid to do their job because they don't want to be the next guy on or, or woman on TV. If, if you know what I mean, they don't want to be the next person who has to hide. So, like, all these arguments, like I said, they pretty much just circle back to F. Trump, and in most cases, like this one, it does, in fact, circle back to communism. And, and that's... It's a silly thing that I didn't think I'd ever be saying, but it's true, it has circled back to communism, and if, again, if you think I'm making stuff up, then you can look at he wore a Fidel Castro shirt. Violent communist, we should all know about that one that one Che Guevara horribly misled people I had a Che Guevara shirt when I was younger I had no idea I thought he was just a revolutionary man who made things better no communist and he actually hated black people is well known uh Kaepernick there so um Black Panther shirt he's wearing that's another communist organization uh very militant and violent as you may know you you gotta ask yourself what are all these events protests marches you have to ask what they're all about and when you get past the people who are there just like yeah I'm showing up to support women or I'm showing up to support the kids or whatever it might be the people who are actually organizing the event 99% of the time they're anti-Trump anti-capitalism pro-socialism and pro-communism that's pretty much just how it happens I think I've done a, a, enough videos on this where I explain how most of these places are started most of these grassroots movements are started not the grassroots they're funded by people who are political actors and and they want to create a following they want to make some money off of this and you can be anti anti trump that's fine just you got to quit lying about it just it's the cnn factor right you got to quit lying about uh what your intentions are and then people will start to believe you believe you more so last quote from colin kaepernick i'm not looking for approval i have to stand up for people that are oppressed if they take football away my endorsements for me, I knew I stood up for what's right. And, well, that's kind of stupid, Colin. Um, by that logic, I could go on my YouTube channel, uh, say a bunch of racist stuff, have my channel closed down, and then I'll just be like, they took away my voice, therefore I know I'm doing the right thing. Cap, that's not good. Uh, he's not good. LaShawn McCoy, one of the best running backs in the league, said he's not good. Michael Vick, one of the quarter best quarterbacks of all time, who's also a running quarterback, like Kaepernick said. He's just not good enough. Uh, to deal with all the commotion around him for a team to keep him. So they say he's not good enough, and I say he's not good enough. People pay good money to come watch his athletes play, and they try to take over the fucking game. Shaq, we're on live. That is a disgusting act by Randy Moss. Close the door! Jesus Christ, you people are crazy! He'll do nothing. He'll do fucking nothing. 
Now, Woody is a deal, none. Get the fuck out of here.